Arsenal close in on Odegaard. Lewandowski at it again. In to make two round move. A transfer window wrap brought to you by our friends at cryptocurrency trading platform Bybit and the great debate all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First up then, and good news for Arsenal as they look to be on the tail of Martin Odegaard and are very close to bringing the Real Madrid midfielder back to the club. Now, of course, he was on loan at the back end of last season and had a very, very good impact with Mikel Arteta's side. But the news from earlier on in the transfer window is that he wanted to go back to Real Madrid and break into the first team now that Zinedine Zidane was no longer at the club. Carlo Ancelotti's come in and it looks as though he still doesn't have a place in the first team. Of course, Odegaard's got a lot to thank the club for, not only signing MA16, but giving him access to loads of facilities, coaches and loan moves to some top, top clubs. But finally, it looks as though his future lies away from the Spanish capital and could be in North London. This will be a pretty good move for Arsenal. I mean, it's not exactly a knee-jerk reaction to the opening day loss to Brentford 2-0. That was more a problem of they couldn't find the back of the net because they created quite a few chances. I think they had 22 shots. This is more of a case that Arsenal have known they've needed someone in the long run to replace Meza Ozil and all his creativity. And of course, they've been looking at Odegaard for so long. Finally, Finally, it looks as though he's accepted he doesn't have a future at Real Madrid. Real Madrid have accepted his future doesn't lie there. And Arsenal willing to pay around 35 million euros to bring the Norwegian into the club. If they manage to get this one over the line, I do think he'll be the creative force that will be massive for Arsenal moving forward. Because it's not just like he's going to come in and put in a few good performances and then go back to his parent club like what happened on loan last season. This could be Arsenal's future. He's at a perfect age, he's got good experience, he could be there for so many years and with some of the young players coming through at Arsenal, they've got loads of time to bond and develop a really good connection on the pitch and I think this is going to be a massively positive move for Arsenal. Moving on then though and to news which shouldn't really be news because it should surprise anybody. Lewandowski finding the back of the net. Of course he did. Two goals last night in the German Super Cup meant that he helped Bayern Munich to a 3-1 victory over Dortmund and things are looking pretty ominous for anyone who wants to challenge Bayern Munich's reign at the top of the Bundesliga. Because if Lewandowski's doing this, he's just bound to win the title again. Anyway, along with Thomas Muller and a goal from Marco Royce for Dortmund, they won 3-1 last night like I mentioned and yet again won the Super Cup. Now, not only this, but it was a personal record for Lewandowski who has now scored in 14 consecutive games for Bayern. That is insane. And it means that he is just two off the record held in Germany by the late Gerd Müller, who did it in 16 matches in a row. Like I mentioned before, Lewandowski finds at the back of the net. Bayern Munich improving with a couple of good signings this summer. It looks like they're going to be unstoppable again. And Dortmund have got a taste of what it's going to take to try and topple them and win the Bundesliga crown. Between them and Leipzig, I think they're the only two real competitors and they're going to have one hell of a fight on their hands if they had to stop Bayern winning, I believe it's going to be their 10th in a row. Moving on then, and to Inter Milan, never far from the transfer headlines this summer. And apparently they're looking at Marcus Turam in their attempt to replace Romelu Lukaku. Now, I say to replace Romelu Lukaku because you'll be very aware that they also signed Edin Dzeko. The thing is, Edin Dzeko is a great hold-up player, fantastic finisher, two feet, brilliant in the air. Marcus Turam, exceptionally quick, has also played out on that left-hand side, very versatile, fantastic link-up play, a really, really good footballer as well. You put both of them together, and that's what Lukaku could do being just one player. Basically, what I'm saying is, it's Milan are having to sign two players to cover Romelu Lukaku being just one player because that's how good he was. They've already got Dzeko in and apparently they're looking at Turam as well because like I mentioned, he can play in quite a few positions. Despite this though, we'll probably have to forget that last season when playing against Inter Milan in the Champions League, he mentioned how he was a massive AC Milan fan growing up. Maybe they'll just sweep that comment under the rug. On top of this though, if they can't bring him in from the Bundesliga side, they're also looking at Luka Jovic. Now, Real Madrid wants to get rid of him permanently to bring in some funds, but Inter Milan are only interested in their loan deal, and their initial offer of a loan of a 3 million fee for the season has been swiftly rejected. Next up then, then we bring you a transfer window wrap brought to you by our friends at cryptocurrency based trading platform Bybit and first off yesterday you would have heard the news that Tammy Abraham completed his 40 million euro deal to Roma. Elsewhere in the looks as though Wolves are planning a 21 million pound bid for Wolves winger Goncalo Guedes. PSG chief Leonardo has apparently told the dressing room that Kylian Mbappe will be staying this season meaning we could see him leave on a free transfer next summer and Cristiano Ronaldo has taken to social media to rubbish all of the rumours and media talk about his future although ironically he then didn't say anything about where 
Ahes Ucha lies or commit to Juventus. Right then, finally, lastly, but not least, we come to this week's great debate. And this one comes from me this week. And it's going to be, which transfer do you guys want to see happen before the transfer window slams shut? Now, for me, I'm actually going for Philippe Coutinho. The reason being is because I still think he's a fantastic player. It's just a shame he's been farmed out on loan. His confidence is obviously taken a hit. And last season with Barcelona, we actually saw that he still is a quality player. If he's going to be pushed down the pecking order or not really wanted in and around the first team, I think he should get a move wherever it may be so that he can really reignite his career. He's only 29 years old and there's still an unbelievable player in there. I'm pretty sure, aside from Liverpool, there wouldn't be a club who wouldn't actually want to take him if the price was right. So you let me know your thoughts down below for the great debate. Check out everything else we've got going on. And until next time, I will see you guys later.